How's it going, everybody? Welcome back to Is It A Buy, where we talk about stocks and try to determine if they are with a buy or maybe a pass. My name is Corey. I'd just like to preface the video by saying I'm not a financial advisor. I'm just a guy who likes to talk about stocks, so please take what I say with a grain of salt, all right? Uh, what is up, everybody? Um, happy to be back for today's live stream. Uh, I wonder if you guys liked yesterday's uh, format. I thought it was pretty interesting. This way, you know, I know... It's a long endeavor to be sitting through the whole live stream every single day. Uh, part of me wonders if doing a video, you know, I wonder if I should try that out for like a week or something. Maybe just doing video daily recaps this way. You know, it's a little more short, succinct and, and to the point. And maybe I'll do, I have to figure out how to. You know, I, I love to work in live streams somewhere, but maybe on like super green days when everybody's pumped up, we'll hop in or maybe super red days when or maybe both. Right. Uh, you know, we'll kind of uh, do that. But I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. But let's go about what's going on. AMC, the good old AMC. What a bounce, what a bounce, what a bounce. Right. So today, AMC did end the regular trading hours at uh, $36, up 7.69% on the day, which is very nice. And the after hours were still climbing. We're up 6.19%, uh, currently at $38.23. Very, very nice. Uh, so let's take a look. So as you can see, I mean, this is exactly what we were hoping for. Um, I did have that level of support around $32. It did it did break past kind of that, that 30 uh 32 dollars but really bounced right there at 3110 as you can see right here uh, i did add to my position as much as i did not think i could or or whatever uh it turns out i had a few a few extra bucks in weeble so i was like you know what bought more and so i'm very happy i bought more i bought at 33 dollars i think uh somewhere around there so I'm doing pretty good. Very happy. No problem. I've been averaging up and I, I don't mind averaging up one bit because if I think this stock is going to go to wherever, right? If I think the stock is going to be worth more than $50 at some point, right? Which I very much do, then uh, it's a good buy, right? It, it's a good buy. Whether I, I think it's going to be more than 100, which I do personally, my personal thoughts on it. So I, I figure even buying at 30, 40, 50, 60, $70, like, easy buy from me right easy buy um so easy so added my position today and i'm feeling good about it uh so that's what happened here let's take a look what happened with gamestop gamestop looks like it was oh what an interesting day so gamestop ended the day at 166 dollars and 82 cents down 0.48 percent in the after hours though it is climbing a little bit looks like it's at 171 dollars and 45 cents up 2.78 percent looks like uh gamestop bounced this was yesterday i, I guess at 151 dollars 38 cents um today it looks like the the low was around what was this we'll call it 150 55 bucks but also it it's so strange it looks like it rallied but i'm not sure why this chart is not why the numbers don't seem to reflect the rally but i guess it is what it is uh so let's take a look at what is going on here um let's take a look at the the well let's say hi to the chat we'll see what's going on diamond welcome my friend first uh dog was second <laughs> great uh macamania what's up eight fam leo uh david got one at 30 3160 pre-market today almost up to 90 shares nice very nice uh dog says i'm not looking at my 401k again for a while yeah dog that's what i do um as you all know I'm, I'm all in on amc so i i do not look at my uh account at all at oh amc and jimmy uh, i don't look at my account at all um, just because I find it so much easier, it's better for my mental health. Uh, I don't get freaked out and, and want to hop out and in and, and, well, I don't really want to hop out and in, but seeing, you know, I'm down X amount of dollars on a red day just doesn't really, especially when my, my conviction is so strong, it just doesn't feel good. And there's no reason to put myself through this like false mental, uh, torture because like it's i'm not gonna sell anyways no matter what so why would i so i decided not to look at it and you know what honestly i'm not gonna lie like not looking at the full account and that's why i'm happy i have my weeble account because i just look at the numbers in here uh and it's a lot better it's a lot easier to hold that way just looking at it for me so yeah i don't look at my account either Ooh, Miss Rodriguez, welcome, welcome, welcome. Hello. 
William with the classic, nobody is enforcing the rules. I think it's coming soon. I freaking think it's coming soon. Diane, help, hello, welcome, welcome. Uh, Eric, Corey, we need to get in stuck in traffic more often so when we're deep red, we can get, AMC can go green the next day. All right, fair enough, fair enough. Let me say hi to some people. Natalie, hey, Trey Subway, <laughs> Trey's Subway crumbs. I'm not leaving. All right. 08, hola, welcome, Vicky, aloha. Manuel, Manny from Port St. Lucie, Florida, welcome, Manny. Diane A and Diane B. Hello, everybody, welcome. Oh, Diane A, that's freaking, I was like, Diane A, I was like, who's Diane A? That's Lee, he tricked us with his dang name changes. Mike, Corey, hi. Corey got high haircut. <laughs> I sure did. I sure did. Stream. Hello. Welcome. Natalie says, I'm in at 104 shares, but would love to be able to buy some call options. Still trying to figure out the Fidelity platform with it all. Yeah, Fidelity platform is so rough. Like, it is... It is not user friendly. Um, remember, uh, they are allegedly they are working on their platform to make it much more um, updated. Remember, they got all the new traders, all the apes. And you know what? My biggest gripe about the platform is the usability of it. It freaking is not like this, right? Robinhood killed it. They have such a freaking fantastic uh, beginner platform. Weeble is even better, in my opinion, when, with all of this stuff. Uh, the only thing that Robinhood has that Weeble doesn't have is I wish I could click and grab and see like the the percentage increase and de decrease for the day. Like I just can't click it like this. And on mobile, um, I, I like putting my two thumbs and seeing the increase of this time to this time uh, percentage. And that's the only thing, the one thing that I would change about Weeble. Uh, but other than that, it's it's an incredible. Mo, can somebody say I'm not going anywhere? Mo, I don't, I don't think anyone's going anywhere. Manuel says, uh, Angelina, welcome. Let's see. Manuel says, I just bought an extra $1,000 today. Nice. AMC. Mike, I missed yesterday. Did we have a class trip or something? Mike, I was actually... Um, I couldn't even stream. I was stuck in... It was raining badly. Very badly. And I... I was stuck in the worst freaking traffic. And then on top of that, so I got through the finally the traffic and then there was a train. It took me it took me so long to get home. Like I couldn't even stream. So I, I did put out a, a tweet and a comment on my actual uh, channel. Is it a cell? I don't understand. Connie, I've been so grouchy today. I think it's the heat. I feel you. Mr. Yesterday, Matt, I know, yeah, everyone, it sucked I wasn't able to uh, stream yesterday, but all right, let's go ahead and continue and see what is going on. Mike was able to add, th or has 300 shares now. Very, very, very nice. Corey's running toilet. Trenton, everyone at work tells me I'm an idiot than when I say AMC. I expect AMC will hit over $1,000. They claim it'll hit a max of $200. Am I... Am I far off? Trenton, you know, the, the, the price, I have a whole video of how high will AMC go. I'd probably recommend watching it just to understand um, kind of my thoughts behind it. The short version is, you know, I really think it's going to be uh, the hedge funds are, are going to have to cover, right? They, they have to purchase their shares. It's clear. It's simple as that, right? And whenever they purchase their shares, it's going to be, if they if the apes truly own the majority of the float, which which there seems to be evidence to, to support that, right? But again, make your own decisions. Uh then they're going to have to purchase all the shares that the apes are holding, right? And if the apes are diamond handed, which the apes seem to be, then the apes will not be letting go of their shares at a cheap price. Uh, and it continues to go up. But better yet, if the margin call happens and all of these, uh, let's go to AMC really quick, all of these asks just getting eaten up. Let's say they have to purchase, you know, on the low end, people have theorized that they own, that they're short 2.5 times the float, which would be, um, is that 2.5 
billion shares. So, because the float is around 500,000 shares. So, if they have to do that, then, so 2.5 billion shares, no, 2. Point, yeah, wow, that's a lot of, 2.5 billion, wow, yeah, 2.5 billion shares, these are just gonna get eaten up instantly, right? Instantly. And I think we're gonna get to the place where people sell orders really aren't there too much. And I think that's when we'll start gapping, right? Start gapping, gapping, circuit breaker holds where it just holds and then it gaps up, holds, gaps up. Um, and I, I think people are gonna get scared about that, which is why I like to talk about it and let people know it's probably gonna be halting as, it's, as it goes up because uh, it's gonna be moving, excuse me, up so quickly. Um, there are systems in place to, to just pause things. Excuse me, so it doesn't move too quickly and all this other stuff. But these, and imagine, like, even if it eats up all of these, I mean, it's this is not even a fraction of a dent of what, what it would cause, right, uh, to the stock. So, yeah, that that's kind of my theory on it. I, I highly recommend watching that video. It's called uh, how, how High Will AMC Go? And it has, like, all the numbers on there. But, you know, and I, I wonder if your coworkers are, they own AMC. Because if they think it's going to go to $200, right, then... Hopefully they have positions because why? Why wouldn't you? If you think if you think you're gonna make money like that, uh, PD Pete, I was able to average down. Now I'm in the green. Uh, PD Pete, I freaking love to see that. Right, I love. It. I know it's not easy to average it down because typically whenever people take a position, they take a large position. Right, you you, you usually just like you buy in because you're like you know what I, I'm bullish on this. I'm expecting the, I, that I probably have a good price for what I can get right now. Uh, and they're probably usually all in. So I'm I'm very happy for you. And I know how good that must feel to uh, to average down like that. I've averaged down in other stocks and it's fantastic. It's always a good feeling like, you know what? I feel good about this, especially on this kind of dip. Speaking of which, Doge, Doge took a dip that I'm like so tempted. But the money, any money that I would have purchased Doge with, I went ahead and purchased AMC with. And I'm I'm already happy that I did. I'm already happy that I did. Um, but Doge is definitely something I, I would love to take a position in eventually. Let's take a look at the tops for the day. And I do want to look at the Ortex data because I think the Ortex data is extremely interesting um, about what's going on, right? So let's take a look. YVR, we've seen YVR on here before. We've talked about YVR. Finally had its run of 65%. So good for them if anyone was in there. Uh, good for them. Uh, let's see what else is on here. Synodyme is in here. Very interesting. Up. Uh, uh, 37.96% on the day. Anything else we recognize? Nope. Let's look at the top losers on the day and see what's going on here. Wait, that was the top gainer. Yeah, for the one day, top losers. And geez, this one was down 66%. Mayron was down 27% today. My goodness. Mayron is a is a wild ride Mayron's right here let's look at the chart for it i mean my goodness just dipping and Mayron is an interesting uh i don't want to say case study but but maybe it will be in the future right uh, about the short interest and everything how not everything is a squeeze we'll see where this plays out in the end right because if this plays out in the end and it actually like runs to some kind of crazy numbers then then That'll be very interesting to to watch, and I guess it's all being documented as we, as we watch this. But I'm very curious to see where this is going to end up in the at the end. Uh, it is pretty oversold in the RSI. I wonder if there's going to be a bounce. But you know, this is just kind of a weird side thing that I, I I just like to track. I really can't tell you why. I'm curious to see if space ever bounced. If you guys don't recall, I believe it was around this time. Let's see. Yep, right here is whenever. Let's zoom in a little bit. So uh, space had some interesting stuff going on. So we'll back up. And um, I'm sure this is probably the news saying that, uh, or I'm not sure where the news was, but there was news saying that, you know, Richard Branson and SpaceX, they were going to go to space. And this is probably the, the news that they were going to expedite the timeline of uh, maybe one of these. They decided that they were going to expedite the timeline. This is when they actually went into space. So uh, this is the this is a Friday, and then this is the weekend. And as expected, you know, it was a successful flight. And uh, Richard Branson, the CEO, billion multi billionaire, one of the richest people in the world, I think, uh, went into space, and he made it back safely. It's a successful flight. They're going to be doing um, what is it called? Uh, 
commercial flights, I guess, where where people like you and I can go into space and, and fly back down or however that journey is going to go. And uh, tickets are going to start at like, I think, two hundred thousand dollars for like early bird. And then they're going to be a five hundred thousand something, something crazy like that for the for the tickets. But right now, I mean, on that good kind of news you you could say it did run in the as soon as the market opened and then it just kind of tumbled and i think they they said that they were going to do some kind of stock offering just an example of how even on bullish kind of news the stock was on such a just beautiful i guess it's a head i don't know if this is head and shoulders but uh very crazy how a stock can just tumble for whenever it's had such a positive um event happen right they're currently at $31 after they people imagine people buying this thinking the stock was going to run at 59.48, you know, at its absolute peak over here. Uh, and then it just drops all the way down to half of, you know, from 60 to $30. Boy, oh boy, that would not have been fun. Uh, new way, kind of similar situation, right? They, I don't know what their, their news catalyst was again, but they had a huge run one day and then they, They've just been tumbling, tumbling since. And I just like to look at these just so we can keep up. We got to keep our minds moving. We're, we're looking at a lot of AMC and GameStop and Doge and, and these other stocks. But, you know, I want us to keep on looking for toward the future for opportunities. I know a lot of traders are new traders, but it's important for everyone to take a look and see, you know, what is going on? What are some kind of trends after a news catalyst has always run up? As you can see, if I had, let's put it this way, if I had an extra thousand dollars or whatever, to throw in to space after that um that positive thing i would have thrown it in i mean why wouldn't you throw it in after such a positive news catalyst but man that really just throws a wrench in everything i don't want no microsoft teams um so yeah all right so let's go ahead uh let's talk to the chat really quick and we're gonna go into or text because this or text data um i, I want to just talk through it really 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 quick Judy, hello, welcome. Angelina, excellent question. Can a squeeze begin in after hours, right? Absolutely. We're going to go back, back in time. So this, look how, I always love looking at this chart because I remember, this is January 27th right here, all the way up here. And look how far we've come since January 27th where January 20, it looks like a little blip, right? It's like, where is it? What's going on? Man, this feels good. And I, in, in my opinion, I think I, I, if I were to guess, again, do you, not financial advice, I, I would, I'm so bullish that I would imagine that this kind of blip is going to get even smaller and this blip is going to look like this blip whenever this freaking thing goes to the freaking moon but let's go and continue here oh gosh this is not going to be easy to look at but yes on january 27th if i were to look at the four hour candles i'd have to go like all the way back and this would not be fun or easy actually am i already here oh that was pretty easy and it was fun so what do i know but anyways if we look here, we can actually see that this, and I, I remember this, I woke up one morning. So basically what happened in the after hours, it started to run, right? Started running, started running, started running. Um, and then in the pre-market, it still continued to run, still continued to run. And it was the most magical thing ever. Like I'll, I'll never forget that day. I, I woke up and they said the stock was up whatever percent. And I was like shaking and I was so excited and my heart was at a million miles an hour. And I felt a little sick, honestly, but it was such a great experience. I was like, no way. Um, and then it was all taken away. Uh, you know, it kind of consolidated, started to run a little bit. And right here was uh, so kind of consolidated, you know, super volatile, right? It was crazy. It was back and forth, back and forth, up and down and up and down, up and down. And then, uh, it got all the way up here. So I think in the pre-market, it was starting to run again. Uh, and then at as soon as I think the market opened, Robinhood halted trading. Everyone was on, everyone owned AMC and GameStop and Robinhood, right? The majority of people, I would say. And it just tumbled. 
you, you can only sell you can't buy and this is what we got uh and, and it, it tried to rally a little bit but it just couldn't uh pick up steam again i mean they were restricting at, at you could only buy uh, one share of gamestop 10 shares of, of amc and that was it um and you know what do you think is going to happen of course it's going to kill it um it was a fun ride until that happened <laughs> uh but look at us now Did Matt Coors get banned on YouTube? You know, I've been seeing some interesting things about Matt Coors. I think it was just his video got, uh, he wasn't allowed to stream for the rest of the day. So if you don't know, Matt Coors is a popular YouTuber, uh, well, finance YouTuber, right? Talking about stocks and stuff. He's of course talking about AMC and GameStop and he did get today. He wasn't allowed to stream. He was streaming every day. He streams every single day during the day today. He did get uh, booted off and he was not allowed to live stream for the rest of the day. Um, I think it was probably a, a copyright. Yeah. I see people saying copyright. So probably a copyright warning. It looks like, and that was it. So, um, mm, you know, unfortunate whenever that happens, but, um, yeah, that's, it's unfortunate. Uh, Troy, welcome. Troy says, would you recommend using Robinhood still? Also, do you think the Moaz will take place in the aftermarket pre-market um, during the trading hours, mix of all? Uh, Troy, I think it's going to be a mix of all. I really don't know when it's going to start or anything. I mean, I've seen I've seen it happen in the pre-market like we just watched. I've seen it happen in the regular hours, uh, which happened back here. This was in the regular hours right here. Uh, crazy run here. Uh, I, I've, seen, I've seen it all. But if I were to... But as far as is Robinhood, 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 Robinhood. I personally was in Robinhood. I love, I, I, I love the, the the platform. I will never say I don't love the platform. Right? It's a fantastic. Just the way it's been built and it's pretty. It's so easy to use, intuitive. It's fantastic. But uh, unfortunately, these guys are, you know, shady. It's just the shadiest things I've ever seen in my life. I mean. And if you if you see their relationships, clear conflicts of interest, it just it just isn't good at all. And they halted trading, and essentially their I think their official statement is we cannot guarantee no, nothing like this will ever happen again. Meaning they'll pull the plug whenever they want, right? They've they've they have had count or not countless, but they've had uh, a, a lot over. I think right now they're in forty lawsuits or something. These guys are in big trouble. Um, whenever I, I'll put it this way, whenever I called Fidelity, granted they're a competitor and everything, I said, and I was about to transfer, and I said, hey, what do you think about what Robinhood did? My representative said, that's a huge no, 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 what they did. They should never have halted uh, tra trading. Um, we would never halt trading. That is that is a big, big, big issue. And remember, and their Robinhood, Robinhood's whole thing is, well, we let you sell. We, we, we just didn't let you buy, right? which is it's the same thing right it's it's like there's only one way the stock is going to go if everyone is selling or for everyone can only sell which way is the stock going to go right they themselves infl inflicted fud fear uncertainty and doubt into all of this messed up the momentum um but luckily the hedge funds seem greedy enough and they they just continue to to short the stock um beyond all common sense in my opinion just the craziest thing i ever saw but uh i personally you know and, and here's the deal will they halt it again i don't know um after everyone has you know after the i don't want to say the majority after all all the people that have left their platform i would imagine that they probably will never halt trading again but they are in my recent videos, I've actually been covering Robinhood. They have a seventy thousand dollar fine and uh, in a record seventy thousand dollar Finra fine. In December, they had a sixty five million dollar fine. I mean, these guys are just bad news overall. Uh, and one of the fines is because they they did. I think it's I don't know what it was for, but you couldn't buy or sell, right? Like, and I've heard horror stories about Doge and crypto that they don't actually own the crypto. All, all this stuff. I, I, there's really not too much going on for for Robin Hood that is good. My biggest concern, and I, I always say this, everyone knows, my biggest concern is I will not be able to participate in the squeeze, right? Previously, yeah, in, in January, sure, they let you sell. And yeah, and theoretically, I guess you would just need to sell during a squeeze situation. 
But also they have halted, they've not let people buy or sell. They said, oh, our system's messed up. You can't do anything. And I would be the most concerned. It's, it's literally not worth my money to risk it by staying in that brokerage, which is why I left. I went straight to Fidelity. I took two two business days. It's so easy. to. It's actually extremely easy to transfer. It was uh, kind of shocking how easy it was. The only thing is if you have options, make sure you have options enabled in your new brokerage before you transfer or they will settle, settle them. Uh, and that is my spiel. So hopefully that helps you make a decision. I have videos on how to transfer and stuff. I mean, that's what I would say. Not worth it for me. And if I, I if I were to guess, I would probably say it's not worth it for you either to be in, in Robin Hood. But again, make your own decisions, manage your own risk, uh, and, and do what you need to do. Can't stop, won't stop. GameStop says Mayron was at 280 short interest uh, not too long ago. Right, right. We, we've seen this. Uh, currently, they're still over 100%, I think. Uh, let's take a look here. All right, let's go ahead and continue on this stuff. So let's take, let's take a look at Ortex, right? Ortex, good old Ortex. So Ortex is, is very interesting. So my, I don't want to say concern, but something I was curious about was when I logged into Ortex today on this green day of, of up 7%, currently in the after hours up 4% additional, you know, what, what was I going to see over here? My concern was this was going to be 10 Utilization, you know, short interest was going to be 10 instead of 15. Uh, utilization was going to be, you know, 50 instead of whatever. You know what I mean? Like, or not even that much, but, you know, 80 utilization, you know, 12 short interest. And then shares on loan is 90 million, right? Uh, meaning, in, in my opinion, meaning that they covered a bunch of shares today and, and we had a 10% bump. And now, you know, it's going to be a slower move. But with these numbers continuing to go up, and granted, they are T plus, these top ones are T plus two, so we'll see what happens, um, you know, tomorrow and Monday. But the fact that these numbers are continuing to to increase is so bullish, in my opinion. I mean, I, I'm, I'm very happy to see that, as well as the short interest currently at 15.89% and rising, right? This is continuing to go up. We can see here historically where it was at. Um, I know we were a little higher previously, but as you all know, my opinion uh, is that we, we maybe we were never actually there uh, because if you were to draw an invisible line here, you can see it just continues to go up. Right. And that's kind of my opinion on, on what is going on uh, with the stock. And it's just so, so very bullish that I just love it. It's looking I think it's looking fantastic. CT, welcome. CT says, I'm just going to say, hasn't Virgin... Hasn't Virgin anything pretty much failed? I like the guy and the idea of ejecting something in orbit, but what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, I mean, I guess that Virgin Airlines, I think they had Virgin Mobile that I'm sure, I don't know, I would assume it was absorbed by somebody. I can't remember what happened to Virgin Mobile, but yeah. Uh, David says, Matt Corse said YouTube took down his stream today. Uh, maybe because, yeah, yeah, so we talked about that. Uh, Newegg had a merger and were heavily shorted. A lot of people bought it before the merger. Uh, Negatur sold. Then he, then T plus 35 hit and took it off. Oh, and it took off. Gotcha. Angel, FTD data. Yeah, let's see if we can find actually that data on the FTDs. Um, let's see if there's anything on here. FTD. All right, look at... FTD in second half of June. Oh, this is Ortex. Oh, I can check failure to deliver an Ortex. Oh, that's pretty cool. Well, what was this? Is this what they did? They just kind of zoomed in? 
Well, oh, I don't know how to go back all. No, we'll look at the one year, year to date, one year. Yeah, look at the one year here. Okay, so taking a look here, I mean, the failure to deliver data is, is pretty high, but, you know, especially historically, right? Historically, now let's ignore these outliers for just a second, and let's look, look at, like, you know, the peaks over here, we can see, we can see the peaks, and they're basically caught up to the peaks. I mean, but my question is, is, you know, what, what was this over here? 27 million, what, what are they currently at? 4 million, okay, so it looks like the, the peak over here was this huge one, what day was this? This is January 27, so on January 27, you can see the failure to delivers were extremely high, and then we saw that kind of move. I mean, I'm not sure if the failure to delivers are, are super crazy for this one, but from my understanding, let's see if we can take a look at GameStop, because for GameStop, um, they're supposed to be much crazier. I'll leave this on, and then I'll do this, and then I'll do failure to deliver. Mm. This is 2 million, and this is 1.9 million. This is January 26, January 27. Hmm. I'm not sure why this information isn't looking more bullish than I thought, but uh, so that's what we have going on there. I mean, from what I've read, I mean, you can see though, it has been increasing more more recently. Um, so failure to deliver, they're supposed to be at, people were saying that, let me see if I can find the super stock really quick. Give me one second. Okay, so here's the interesting part, right? So let's let's look at this chart really quick. So January 27th, whenever it had its crazy run for, for AMC and GameStop, January 27th and January 26th, we'll just use the, the larger one here, was, you know, 2 million, right? We'll call it two, it's, you know, 2 million, 100,000. So we'll call it 2 million. And here we can see on June 18th, there were, is this 500,000? 500,000 shares. Is that what we're seeing here? Three forty-six. Yeah, I don't know. Something something seems a little bit weird here. So here, yeah, something seems wrong because, and I'm sorry, I'm trying to figure this out with you guys, but like, so, uh, like, okay, so in January. What, what brought them, or whenever, what brought them to $340, right? What was the huge run-up? And they said, it looks like it was it was 298K. And there were comments down here. I, I had seen this one. See, 300K. We'll call it 300K, right? So 300K, and currently there's 500K. Um, however, these numbers seem to be a little bit weird. Uh, oh, I guess that's, let's see, it says 346K. What's this one right here? June 18th. Oh, okay, that makes sense, 462K. So we can see this information here, sorry. Anyways, man, that was a, a mouthful, but that's kind of what's going on there. I mean, it, pretty interesting stuff. I mean, it's not as crazy as January, but I don't think it has to be as crazy as January. Uh, I think everything else is set up properly, so we'll just kind of see what happens. Let me catch up on the chat. We'll kind of go through these things and uh, we'll go from there. He's back. My eyes got so dry, my contacts. All right. Uh, 
Uh, so let's go ahead and continue over here. So we looked at this. Fairy to delivers. Fairy to delivers. So more suits. So keep in mind, I don't. I can't verify any of these numbers. Like I just saw this, and I figured, you know what? This seems pretty interesting. Uh, I want to see if there's any kind of uh, rebuttals in here. Usually, you know, there's some kind of rebuttal in here. Uh, but let's see. But why now? Why are they coming out now? Anyone notice something different about this guy? He's got to be a quant. Oh my gosh, that's a reference to uh, <laughs> to uh, the Big Short. If you haven't seen the Big Short, I'm telling you, you need to watch the Big Short. It's so good. It's extremely relevant to what is going on. Uh, it's it's very 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 interesting. Okay, so let's read this really quick. Um, and and oh gosh. Uh, we'll read this one. And so this is numbers. I mean, he has these numbers again. This is, this is trust me, bro type stuff. I'm not sure where these numbers are coming from. Uh, I, I can't fact check it. I can't put it to the side, but let's just take it with a grain of salt. Let's read through it and we'll go from there. So this person says, as of June 2nd, the CEO confirms eight plus 80% of retail float ownership, uh, followed by unprecedented international FOMO buying, especially out of Germany, South Korea and Canada. Plus Delta hedging on in the money call options. Plus 28 institutional float ownership per latest Fintel estimates from 13F filings. Notable ads um, plus six plus point or 6.5 million shares at uh, 79 State Street. Uh, plus 6 million shares here. Plus 2.8 million shares there. Large equity fund. Large institutional equity funds have underweight restrictions. Uh, for any given security, as their returns are often benchmarked by index, indels, or ETFs. I don't know why I combine index and ETFs for indels somehow. Um, estimated short interest, sixteen percent of the float. That's about one hundred twenty percent, one hundred twenty-four percent of the float, based strictly on reported figures, not accounting for speculation regarding naked short selling and etf creation redemption arbitrage a much better short squeeze condition compared to volkswagen it's simple float math right so this is pretty interesting right i think i think this is pretty uh pretty wild right um and again you know this is this is basic reported information and actually I, I think i would agree with this um if we were to pull up like fintel and stuff we could see these these like you know the 13 f's that have to be reported and filed after x amount of time and and that good stuff of, of who bought and and who's in it now and you can see the it's, it tells you the institutional ownership and all, all that good stuff right so about 124 percent of the float is is owned currently based on the public information that we know of this right here, what he's saying is, you know, this is based strictly on reported figures. This is not accounting for any speculation regarding naked short selling, ETF, you know, creation. Uh, I don't know if this includes dark pools, you know. Um, I'm sure these numbers like that he calculated don't include dark pools or whatever that looks like, right? So I think that this is extremely interesting right this is a i would say this is a conservative estimate of 124 percent of the float is owned um and remember there i i i personally believe that there's probably naked short selling uh this etf create creation redemption arbitrage that i don't understand and then uh who knows what's going on in dark pools and, and who knows where else they can be right the etfs and stuff it's wild so this is very, very interesting. I'm pretty bullish on this. I saw somebody talking about the Wes Christensen. So, yeah, so I really don't fully understand what he's doing, but Wes, Christ Wes Christensen is officially investigating AMC and GME, uh, which is pretty great, right? I mean, we, we need people uh, investigating what is going on, right? The apes are doing a fan-freaking-tastic job. They've truly paved the way for every for anyone to look into this, right? 
especially the larger apes, the, the bigger apes, you know, like uh, a Tobit Austin, uh, who, who's been in this thing for, for a long, for a whole long time and coming out with some fantastic DD and has some, um, and through this, he's made some interesting connections to Congress, like to big people, important people who, <laughs> excuse me, who can, uh, look into this. And I'm, I'm hoping that that just continues, uh, that just continues on and on and on because this that's what we need right we, we definitely need this kind of stuff uh ant card says let's see matt and addy christensen can we promote and donate oh okay can we promote and donate to help the case getting started we have we cannot have hedge funds keep kicking the can for a very long time. Right, yeah, I don't want them kicking the can for much longer. But I agree with William. William says a lawsuit, a lawsuit would take many years. William, this is absolutely true, right? And lawsuits traditionally, right, historically, take a long, long time. Now, the question is, is, you know, is this more cut and dry? Is this something they can find them? Is this that and that? But uh, even then, even a class action lawsuit, I mean, you really don't get like anything. Class action lawsuits really aren't anything special um, in whenever it's to all the masses, right? Whenever it's to all the masses, I mean, not to, to my knowledge, at least, and, and I may be incorrect here, but uh, it seems like, you know, if there's a huge class action lawsuit, you get 10 or 15 bucks per person and, and you know, that's it you get a pat on the shoulder but yeah oh there we go lee lee put a, a a comment in here so we can see the for the lawsuit fees we can there's a gofundme set up so feel free to go ahead and click that <laughs> velocity amc squeeze uh 20 30 yeah that seems pretty freaking crazy Uh, Eric says, Corey, we need the SEC and Justice Department to do their jobs. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think it's coming. I, I really do. I mean, and maybe here's the deal. I'm sure I'm a little naive here, but I think with everything going on, uh, I'm sure someone's looking into it. Gary Gensler seems to be wanting to, like, look into these guys and stuff uh, and, and want just a fair market, right? It, it's not even about looking into them specifically for the apes. It's about looking into them to have a fair market because this market – you know, why, why would anyone want to trade whenever it's, the game is rigged, right? It doesn't make any sense as to why that would be. So, in my opinion, you know, I think they're looking into it. It does take a long time. We know it takes a long time, right? It takes a lot of research and they have to get concrete evidence and proof and blah 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 remember if they if they go in with a half-baked scheme number one the people get away number two they get sued for like defamation or whatever they get sued for and it just doesn't work out and then everyone just just bad all around right nobody wins if they go in prematurely right if it was up to the apes they would go into you know we would have them go into tomorrow and they would like you know start just pulling files and doing this and that and, and asking questions and one by one interviews and stuff but you know what um, if they don't know what they're looking for, if they, if they don't know how this happened, if I really don't know the process at all, but, um, it, it could just not turn out the way the apes hope it would go. Uh, so it has to be done the right way, which unfortunately does take uh, some time and, and granted, you know, I'm, I'm sure there, it seems like they're probably dedicating a lot of resources to what is going on because it literally affects, like it could potentially affect the entire economy, um, in my opinion again but yeah we'd have to see we would really have to see they're investigating people who find loopholes for a living right this is what web Trip says and and that that's a, a good point you know and, and we saw this if you watch the wolf of wall street these guys you know they the SEC, they really didn't know what to look for, from my understanding previously, right? They didn't know what to look for whenever they were investigating um, uh, Jordan Belfort. And uh, because of that, they were in there looking through the papers and just doing like an audit or whatever. And everything looked legit because they didn't know what to look for. They didn't know how to do it. And I mean, they knew how to do it, but it was 
but whatever, you know, whatever happened. So um, that's the way that went. Um, and so I, I, you guys know, I love looking at these freaking memes. I, I freaking love looking at these memes. So this, uh, bought five more. I bought three, I only got one. And I love just seeing this guy's freaking face, dude. Oh, I thought I could zoom in here. You guys don't have money. <laughs> Here's the deal, man. The apes, they're running out of money. Everyone knows, but you know what the benefit of the apes running out of money is it costs apes nothing to freaking hold goose egg. All right, opportunity cost. And, you know, it, if you think you have another play out there, opportunity cost, manage your opportunity cost, right? I don't think I have another play out there. I'm managing my opportunity cost by personally making my personal decision to stay in the stock. And that is my opportunity cost right there. It, it's not worth it for me to try and chase stocks and make plays. Then AMC runs and my stock goes down and I'm losing money, losing money. Not worth it for me at all. Buying and holding, I believe historically, has always been the best way to make money um and you can ask some you can ask people like uh oh my gosh i forgot his name what the heck ask the biggest traders the biggest traders out there the best strategy and they'll say buy and hold warren buffett is his name my goodness Ask Warren Buffett what, what he would recommend. Ask anyone what they would recommend. They would say buying and holding, right? Uh, and that's the way it goes. Because what happens is, you know, young traders, what they do is they buy. The stock goes down or doesn't go the way they want it to go. And then they, they're they like, all right, well, this isn't working. I'm going to sell out. I'm going to try over here because this stock is running, right? They chase and it goes up. And then they chase and, you know, or like the stock is going up. Then they chase and then it starts to go down. And then this stock is going up, they chase, and the stock goes going down. And they just lose money, lose money, lose money, uh, and that's what happens. So it definitely be careful whenever it comes to trading. I mean, obviously make all of your own decisions. I, I really am not uh, I'm not a financial advisor, so I can't tell you what to do. But um, that is that. Um, but I, I think that's, uh, yeah, let's take a look at where the stock is right now. So stock right now looking pretty freaking solid, very, very solid. Uh, AMC is currently at $38 and 34 cents, uh, approximately in these after hours here, um, currently at, uh, or currently up, you know, around six and a half percent in the after hours, which is very very nice william says i don't trust aa you know william here's the deal I, I don't think you really have to i mean i don't know why you wouldn't trust aa remember adam aaron adam aaron you know why well, i per, i personally i probably would not call him an ape but well i don't know if i'd call him an ape you know he holds amc and but <laughs> i don't know if i really consider that i will say whether you consider him an ape or not he has his own agenda and his agenda is just to make sure this company is a viable company in the future, right? I don't think he cares about a short squeeze. I don't think he cares about all of this crazy stuff, right? He cares about is this stock, is, is this company going to be around? Uh, is it going to make it? Is it going to stick around? Is it going to be okay? Are they going to be able to recover? What, is the, what does it look like? Is he going to hand, whenever he retires, is he going to hand someone a, a junk company? Um, you know, because it's a big deal, right? Especially for him, I would say this, you know, I think he's gonna retire. This is probably gonna be his last company that he's CEOs for. He's probably gonna retire after this company. And imagine, you know, he, he doesn't wanna leave it in shambles and say, all right, well, you know, good luck with that. He wants to fix it. And he has such an, in my opinion, I think it's an extremely easy opportunity here to kind of fix the company because there's so much sentiment, so much, uh, so, so much, uh, power behind it, right? Just between the apes and the movement and what's going on. And everybody loves AMC right now. They want to go to AMC. They want to uh, support AMC. They want to blah, blah, blah. Um, and Adam Aaron, all he has to do is just not mess it up. Do not upset the apes and he'll, he'll be just fine. Right. Uh, William says, Adam Aaron won't release an accurate count of shareholders and uh, shares, including naked short shares well i'm not sure if he's allowed i don't know what he's allowed to release i don't know what information he has you know maybe that might be accurate but i really don't know i kind of don't think that he would i feel like he would probably 
he he would share the information if he could, right? You know, I think he he knows what that he knows what the apes want to hear. He we want to hear that there's naked shorting. We want to hear that this there's more float than out there than or more shares being held than there is the float. He knows everything. And the fact that he's not saying that is, you know, maybe a legal reason, maybe this, that. There could be a million different reasons under the sun, but I think that he uh, he has a reason. Uh, Mike says, do you, do you think we, we run again tomorrow? Um, I kind of tricky to tell. I, I do agree. I saw somebody say here that they, they probably don't want us to um, – expire options in the money i feel like any option that probably would expire in the money is already been hedged for i think they've already been hedged for at that point um just based on the pr previous price action which is where it's been right now uh although they maybe they did use those shares to, to they sold those shares and and to or lent them out to be borrowed uh, to be shorted so hard to tell but uh it's just a really a coin flip tomorrow i guess it's a coin flip every day huh um, there's on one side, they don't want those options. They may not want the options to expire in the money because of the, the, um, you know, potential gamma squeeze or whatever. Let's see what's happening tomorrow. As far as options go, actually, let's check Stonko tracker. For AMC, so and you know, realistically, in my in my opinion, this this really isn't enough to cause a gamma squeeze. Historically, uh, I've seen you know 19. I think the lowest you know was more previous, more recently, I should say, was about 19 hundred and what was it 190 900. It was 19. I think it was 190,000 contracts to be 19 million shares. So uh, we don't have you know that many contracts in order for it to expire in the money, I don't think. Yeah, because 58,000 times 100. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it had to be 900,000. No, that's not right. Oh my gosh, I'm like having a, I'm freaking out. 190,000 contracts that's what it was yes 190,000 contracts is what it was uh and we're not even close to that so unlikely i think that we would have a gamma squeeze um even if a lot of these did expire in the money i mean i guess it depends on where we go huh because there's a whole lot of options being played for tomorrow so we'll see which way it goes i mean it's very possible we could have some kind of move here where it will actually expire in the money but um you know we'll just have to play it slowly but uh typically on fridays they do like to heavily short the stock this way the options don't expire in the money because once the options expire in the money there's a possibility for that gamma squeeze right so yeah yeah yeah, yeah i'm looking at the out of the monies here i can see there's a lot right but you know i, I don't know if we'll hit 90 dollars, you know 70 dollars by tomorrow uh but that'd be great i'd accept it but you know if we go here i don't know what this would be let's see we'll call this 10 20 I mean, we need like a hundred. So maybe if we hit fifty dollars, uh, I could see a potential gamma squeeze next week. But again, I ha I'm not really doing the math in my head here. This is a lot of math. You know, this is some kind of Rain Man math. But I, I would not be able to do. We need 145 by Friday for Lee. Oh boy, Lee. I hope it works out for you. You know what? This is pretty cheap. It's a pretty good deal. A dollar. Man. That'd be some good gains. Uh looks like the uh, the stock or the the what is it called? Market did just close the after hours. Looks like we closed at 3813, uh, up 5.92% in the after hours, which is fantastic. Uh, not bad. Oh, by next Friday. <laughs> oh my gosh. What about GameStop? So let's take a look at GameStop. So GameStop, I think it's a similar kind of situation. I mean, um, currently, well, 
I, I unfortunately I don't know how high GameStop would have to be to, to gamma squeeze based on any kind of historical trend. I, I, don't, I don't have those numbers. I did try to find those numbers previously. However, I was unsuccessful. I, I just could not find those freaking numbers. If anyone knows where to find those numbers, I literally try to pay somebody for it. Right? I try to pay uh, to find that information. I found a person who or a, a, a company who had historical data and stuff. And maybe I didn't know how to use their historical data or what, but I, I paid them to like s grab that info and, and like give it to me in a, an Excel sheet. And they were just unable to for whatever reason. So I don't know. I, I, I'd love to find that information, especially for like January, right? January 20 uh, or the, the Friday before January 27th or, or anywhere around. Yeah, I would love to see what happened there. Uh, so GameStop did end the day at $172, even up 3.11% in the after hours. All right. So uh, it's looking pretty good. I mean, we'll, we'll continue to monitor, as you guys know. Oh, tomorrow. I forgot. I totally forgot to mention this. Tomorrow, I'm, I, I'm actually going to go out of freaking town. I'm going to be out of town tomorrow. Uh, and so I'm not going to be able to stream. And I'm upset about it. I'm sad about it. But I, I understand. I mean, you know, I, I guess I can't stream every day. So. Uh, we'll have to take a look and see what happens tomorrow, um, but uh, yeah. So I, I I do apologize about that, but that's just the way it's gonna go. So sorry, but um, I'm gonna pull this up for Rocky really quick. We'll see how this looks if it does load. Um, but other than that, I'm gonna go ahead and start wrapping it up here, guys. Uh, I appreciate you guys hanging out with me. Uh, sorry I won't be on tomorrow, but I'm gonna see what I can do. Uh, I'm going to see what I can do. Maybe I'll release a video or, or something. Although I, I guess I won't have my phone with me or computer or anything, but uh, we'll see what happens. But I'll go ahead and get this pulled up. Feel free to go ahead and pause it. Uh, uh, Rocky and see what you got. And I'll just kind of leave this here for you for a second. Go ahead and pause it. And then I'll, I'll let you look at it, my friend. But you guys have a fantastic night. I appreciate you guys. Have a, a, a great. Oh, okay. Yeah, Diane, I'll, I'll let you know. I'll send you a message real quick. Er, yeah, yeah. All right. I'll catch you guys later. Have a great night and a great freaking weekend. Peace.